1970, April 22nd, the very first Earth Day. Earth Day was conceived as a nationwide teaching on the perils facing the planet. 20 years later, April of 1990, Oceanside, California is preparing for Earth Day, planning numerous events designed to raise the awareness about environmental issues. Oceanside has declared April Earth Month. Dozens of organizations have developed programs to get people involved. People involved in protecting our environment, locally and globally. Let's drop in on a few of these events, all leading up to April 22nd's Earth Day. A beautiful, colorful celebration set to take place at Harbor Beach. A day set aside to make people aware of taking care of the earth. The concerns and ideas of local school children about the earth were expressed in a citywide poster art contest sponsored by the Anti-Litter Committee. We in this class and at all of Del Rio are very excited about Earth Day that's taking place in Oceanside April 22nd. And we've been studying about what we as a class and a community can do to help our environment. Uh, the kids are really excited about doing their posters and entering them into the contest. In class, in our class, we recycle glass and cans. We're very conscientious of using all of a piece of paper, both sides of a paper. The kids are very much aware of that. I'm very concerned with the children and the environment and what's happening to the world today. And the poster contest that the Anti-Letter Committee is sponsoring is part of our goals and objectives. And um, we're doing this with the elementary school children. And these kids are great artists. Mrs. Thompson was 
really uh, an involved parent and bringing the program to us uh, through her affiliation with the anti-litter committee here in Oceanside. And although the students uh, are really very much interested in uh, being aware of how we can take care of our environment, they've also been involved at the school here in a, what we call the Project Pride program. And our Project Pride program is designed to encourage pride in the school and in the facility itself by having the students go out and picking up uh, litter and trash. Uh, with the exception of broken glass, we can't do that. Well, it means that we should take care of our earth and recycle things that we can use again and that so we don't have piles of junk all over the places that we like to explore and learn new things about. It means we should take care of our environment and um, pick up any trash and make our earth look more beautiful. It means like saving our environment and cleaning it up. It means that we should um, clean up our earth and pick up all the trash. It means to recycle things and pick up trash and try and use the area and not put trash all over the area so that we can't use it. I think Earth Day means to not to litter and don't be wasteful. It means recycling things that we can use again and to stop littering the earth. Not, not to litter and to keep the world clean. Well, it's just an environment that um, keep, the, keep the earth clean. Some people really don't care about trash, but as room three does. Well, to me, it's very important, and so we should take care of our earth and our planet so it can be a beautiful earth and planet. So aliens and stuff won't come to our place and stuff like that, okay? Parks and schools throughout the city, tree planting ceremonies occurred that raised the conscious awareness of Oceanside children and adults. The festive occasions were marked by speeches, face painting, and the planting of trees that will continue to contribute to improve the quality of the air we breathe even after Earth Day. to do was to make us aware that we needed to take care of our earth and that in order to have our earth that we needed to be aware that certain things had to happen in order for the earth to stay healthy. But boys and girls, 20 years later, today, 1990, we need to be more than just aware. We need to do something about taking care of our environment. A, a real uh, real successful tree planting out at Libby Lake Park. Uh, we had a nice group of volunteers come out from uh, Dimension Cable, from Oceanside Disposal. Many uh, concerned uh, citizens uh, showed up today 
and uh, it really has gone great. Uh, we had an uh, unexpected group from, from uh, rental school come by and got the children involved, which uh, really added to the events of the day. That is why we're here today, to rededicate ourselves to recycling and regenerating those blessings here on earth that are still left to us. Because of the use and the abuse of our environment on our ecological system, there are some losses that are irrevocable. There are some things that have been lost to our environment that we will never again have. But those that are still here are ours to preserve. And that's why today you are here to participate and the planting of these trees. Hi, I'm Tim Peckham, president of the CARE organization, Citizens Against Risking the Environment, and we're having a pretty fun day today at Libby Lake Park. As many of you know, at three parks, Capistrano, Buddy Todd, and Libby Lake Park, we've been sponsoring a Park Appreciation Day, and the co-sponsor along with us has been the Parks Department of Oceanside. And what we've done in the morning at all three parks is do a cleanup, and then after we've done the cleanup to reward the kids for all their help, we've been doing a barbecue. And in addition to the barbecue, we've been having visits by the Fire Department and Police Department talking to the kids about safety related issues and showing them the equipment that they use in their day-to-day -day operation. Matt and I were down here working on a documentary on the Buena Vista Lagoon for our KOCT program on Earth Day and those rare white pelicans were flying around and we turned around and we noticed that uh, the beautiful Buena Vista Lagoon, which is one of only two freshwater lagoons in all of Southern California, was pretty badly polluted and it didn't seem right to simply document Earth Day but get involved. And fortunately, Brownie Troop 4467 from uh, Carlsbad, they also agreed to do it as, as part of both Earth Day festivities and getting a patch for cleaning up. Uh, they'll be doing some duck stenciling later that says, do not pollute our home, so that hopefully other people, when they come down here, they'll take a moment and enjoy the lagoon and its natural environment instead of throwing old car doors and batteries down here. It felt good to get involved, although it's kind of disgusting work. quality of air and water has been a global concern. A tour of Oceanside's local water agency's facility gives an insight into how Oceanside is handling its water needs and its plans for the future. Hi, my name is Joe Myers. I'm with the City of Oceanside Water Utilities Department. Today we're going to take a look at four of our water and wastewater facilities here in the city. Uh, start, to start out with, we'll go to the Robert Weiss Water Filtration Plant. We'll take a look at one of our reservoirs, a hydroelectric plant, and then we'll finish up with a visit to our San Luis Rey wastewater treatment plant. Okay, we're at the Robert A. Weiss water filtration plant. This filtration plant is located just west of Interstate 15 and south of Gopher Canyon Road. This uh, plant is the connection point into the San Diego County Water Authority system. The city has four connection points into the water authority system one in the Fallbrook area, one in the San Marcos area, and two connections at this point. We can take either raw water, which is untreated, or we can take treated water at this point. Most of the time we take treated water here. This water goes through the filtration plant and is disinfected 
for uh, safe water use in the, in the homes and businesses of Oceanside. We're at about an elevation of 1,000 feet here. Uh, the water comes downhill from the Metropolitan Water District and uh, goes into the San Diego County Water Authority system. Uh, the water from here goes down to city residences uh, and businesses uh, and is put into reservoirs also. This is the City of Oceanside's San Luis Rey Wastewater Treatment Plant. The City of Oceanside has two wastewater treatment plants. This plant is located off of Douglas Drive and North River Road. The other wastewater treatment plant is located at Buccaneer Beach. It's the La Salina Wastewater Treatment Plant. Both of Oceanside's wastewater treatment facilities treat wastewater at a secondary level. Plans are uh, proceeding to implement reclaim water, which treats water at tertiary level. Also, the city is moving aggressively towards composting the solids component that is produced out of wastewater treatment, and that's going to be a composting facility that will produce a mulch-like material that can be used on landscaping projects. The wastewater can also be used for parks, schools, golf courses, and will offset the need to import water into the city of Oceanside. The city is working very hard towards implementing these projects. Okay, we're at the San Francisco Peak Hydroelectric Facility. This facility generates electricity for area residents. The electricity is a result of water coming downhill in sealed pipelines. It needs to be slowed down. It's at too high of a pressure. So what happens is the water is run through these turbines and the resulting electricity that's produced is sold to SDG&E. The city earns about $45,000 a year off of this facility. Okay, serving the city of Oceanside, as you can see, is a very big job. And it's an important job that we at the Water Utilities Department take seriously. We feel that protecting the environment and the health and safety of our citizens is a big part of that responsibility.